I still can't fucking believe it, Charlie murmured, a single tear travelling down his worn face. He was so pale, like all life had been drained from him. God, how I wished that was true. How I wished it was him they found, dangling from that rope, instead of her. I know, bud, I said, patting his shoulder. I'm so sorry. And I was sorry, but not for him. Never for him. The coffin was lowered down so fucking slowly. What was taking them so long? Just drop the thing down there already. I bit my lip in frustration, a single drop of blood staining my white shirt. I just wanted everyone to be gone. Just wanted one last moment alone with Rose. I needed to say goodbye. Needed to say I was sorry. You go ahead, bud. I said to Charlie, after they'd finally got the thing down there, and all the crocodile tears had been spent, and the priest had told us that it'd all be fine in the end. Because God loves us all, and it was all somehow a significant part in his grand plan. I know it's cliche and all, but what fucking piece of shit plan is that, God? The plan where you snuff out someone so good, so pure and true, and leave the rest of us to rot in the wake of her loss? No wonder people are abandoning you. You fucking lost it. He has, hasn't he? A cheery voice called from behind me. Charlie and the rest of the fake grief entourage had left for the wake, and I was finally alone with Rose. I just needed this moment alone. Why was that so hard to understand? Why couldn't the universe grant me just this one simple request? What? I asked, the somber pain in my trembling voice, catching myself by surprise. I turned, expecting maybe the priest, or one of Charlie's dirtbag cousins, but instead found myself face to face with a tall and tan stranger, dressed in an immaculate white hoodie. The big guy, he grinned, pointing to the sky. He's lost it. He only had the one marble, you know, and he fumbled that one eons ago. His piercing emerald eyes burrowed into mine in ways I can't quite explain. There was something so wrong about his imposing presence. Like I knew he somehow wasn't meant for this place, for this world. Every fibre of my being wanted him gone, yet I was also drawn to him, to the godless energy he so effortlessly radiated. Uh, I murmured. I don't know. Sure you do, Evan. Sure you do. He interrupted, an idle step forward, sending shivers down my spine. You see it, clear as sudden death. There is no balance anymore. No one around to keep those karmic numbers aligned. How do you know my... Have we met before? He shook his head, taking another step forward, now glancing into the gaping wound in the earth. I felt like running turning on the dime and bolting for my car. I've never really felt fear like that before, you know? Instinctual. Primal. But even though my system was overflowing with adrenaline, I couldn't move. I couldn't leave her. I had to say goodbye. Had to say how sorry I was. Imagine if... The stranger started, the shape of his long blonde hair seemingly unaffected by the rain of which was now pouring down relentlessly. Imagine if there was a way to get him to pay. Who? I asked. God. No, Evan. He chuckled heartily. That's above your pay grade, I'm afraid. Her husband, Charles. My fingers crossed to fists at the mention of his name. I won't deny having considered it. Killing that abusive motherfucker beating him to an unrecognisable pulp, and then leaving him to die, a slow, painful death. He knows, the man said, sauntering over to face me. I winced internally as our eyes locked once more, and after no longer than a second, I had to turn my gaze to the wet grass. 
He knows you two were, how shall I put it delicately, doing it. Fuck you, I erupted, instinctively swinging at him. I could have sworn he was standing right in front of me, and judging by the sound of his voice, he was. But when I looked up, he was nowhere to be seen. I can do it, you know. A soft voice whispered into my ear. I can make it right. Make it balanced. Shit, I said, staggering sideways in shock. All I need is your go-ahead, the man said. And I can make it happen. How? I yelled, a relentless grief tumour travelling up my esophagus. Oh, it's easy. I'll just pull the old switcheroo. Charlie takes her place in the coffin, and you get your rose back, happily ever after. No, I stammered incoherently. It's it's not possible. It's not right. Right, the man snarled, his violent gaze flashing a vivid green. What's right about any of this, Evan? Charles beating Rose to an inch of her death, her lying to you about it. How many doors did she clumsily walk into, Evan? Did you count? But you knew. She didn't have to tell you. Yet you did nothing, did you? You watched her wither away until she was no more. Until there was no other way out. Was that right, Evan? Is that righteous? D don't I murmured. P please don't. That's guilt you're feeling. Guilt and grief, and anger, and hate. Potent mix of powerful emotions, no doubt. But ultimately wasted, if you do not use them, Evan. I fell to my knees, digging my face into the soaking wet grass. I'm... I'm sorry, Rose. So, so sorry. I sobbed. How? How do I get her back? How can I make this right? Easiest thing in the world, the man grinned. A simple handshake will do the trick. And then, I asked, w what is the cost? No cost, he said. I'm doing this for the balance. To one-up the big guy, you have my undying word. There was dark sincerity in his voice. Blasphemous, sure. Profane and unholy, yes, but truthful nevertheless. I stumbled to my feet, my once pristine rental suit, now a muddied mess. I threw a long glance into the depths of the grave. What did I have to lose? Nothing. A long tormented life of hollow nothing. It's a deal then, I muttered, extending my hand. Charlie, for Rose. Splendid, he said, grabbing my hand in an instant. An overwhelming sensation of pain suddenly ran up my shoulder, like he'd ripped the fucking thing right out of the socket. Bring old Charles out here, and I shall see to it. Wait, I said, clutching my arm. I have to bring him here? You have to use it, Evan, he said, a gleeful smile stretching across his perfect face. Put some effort into it. I nodded, weakly, letting the dormant hatred slowly overcome the crippling grief. Just bring him out here. That's all. Easy peasy. I could do that. For her. For Rose. The walk from Rose's grave to the wake was the longest five minutes of my life. Every step felt like an eternity. A harrowing void of emotions attacking me from all angles. Tears flowing, fists closing and opening in seizure-like movements. Fingernails digging into skin, teeth clenching together so hard, I half expected them to crack and explode and fly out of my mouth in jagged shards. And then, tranquility. A terrible, all-consuming calm. Charlie, I said, walking up behind him. He was surrounded by aunts and uncles and unknown and insignificant faces, every one of them offering platitudes and fake salt, flat voices disguising as concern. 
If I could, I'd drag every last one of them with me. But I just needed Charlie. Evan, Charlie said, smiling briefly before realising he shouldn't be doing that, then hiding it just as quickly behind the unaffected plainness of a psychopath's mask. What happened? You look like a mess. I need a word, I murmured, sweat dripping down my brow, the strained intervals of breathing threatening to expose everything. There's someone uh, desecrating the grave. I need your help fucking them up. What? He exclaimed, his true face showing for just a brief second. Who? Didn't know, bud, I said truthfully. Will you help me? You fucking know it, he snarled. Let's go. Charlie didn't hesitate. It wasn't in his nature. All impulse, no thought. He'd been like that since I first met him in middle school. I just wish I'd noticed the signs earlier. Maybe then we wouldn't be in this mess. Bursting out of the door, Charlie soon picked up pace, running across the road into the graveyard, never once slowing down. I struggled to keep up, but at the same time I kind of hoped I couldn't. Maybe it'd all be over before I got there. But it wasn't, of course. That was never his intention after all. Is this the guy? Charlie yelled, pacing back and forth aggressively in front of the man in the white hoodie. The man didn't flinch though, just stood there idly, hands in pockets, a vicious grin plastered on his face. It is, the man said. I am indeed the guy. I was out of breath, struggling to stay on my feet, watching from a distance as Charlie charged the man swinging fists around drunkenly, but never once landing a single hit. Here we go, Evan, the man chuckled. Let us set things right. He swiftly raised a hand and snapped his fingers. That was it. That was all it took. No lightning from above, no poof of smoke, no infernal ring of fire, just a barely audible snap of his fingers. And Charlie was gone. And Rose? Rose appeared. Here she is, Evan. The man laughed. As promised. The old switcheroo. I scrambled to my feet and ran to her, swooping her up in my arms in a tight embrace. Her skin felt so good against mine. It's a terrible thing to say, but it did. Cold and smooth, like a porcelain doll. She was so beautiful, you know, even in death. She was the most beautiful woman I'd ever laid my eyes upon. I'm sorry, I whispered into her rotting ears. I'm so sorry. Happily ever after, the man said cheerily. I dropped her dead body to the ground, overcome then by every dark emotion known to man. Hatred, fury, grief, guilt... And just when I thought I couldn't take it any more, when the soothing comfort of the darkness crept in, the man, now whistling a merry tune, walked up to me, resting an impossibly cold hand on my shoulder. Do you hear that? He said, looking up to the sky. And I did. I heard it, clear as sudden death. I heard Charlie's desperate shrieks from down below. Fists and feet banging on the coffin lid relentlessly. That's the sound of a choice, the man said. And that's your punishment, Evan. And your reward. The man gave me a solid pat on the back. And then, with a wink and a smile, he was gone. Just like that. Poof. I sat there for minutes, staring at the lifeless body of Rose at the swirling clouds above, at the yawning chasm below. And then, I grabbed the shovel. Hello listeners, if you enjoyed this story, please check out the author in the description. For more content, leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more sinister readings.